Okay, so for histograms at A level, we're going to look at three different skills. Um, in fact, I think there's four different skills. Three of them are about how you use histograms, and the fourth one is very, very quick. So the first thing is now the um, non-GCSE version is that the area of the bar is proportional to the frequency. So area is frequency times K. K is just a constant. So unlike at GCSE, the area of a bar is not necessarily equal to the frequency. They are just proportional. So first of all, what you're going to try and do for this first skill is you identify the scaling using a known area with a known frequency. It could either be the total area, it could be just the frequency. Uh, so it could be the total area or total frequency, or it could just be one bar. And then you just use the formula. The area is the frequency multiplied by k, where k is a scaling constant. And then you can just use that throughout the problem. So there's a couple of different ways you could do this first question, and I'm going to show you both of the different ways. I'm going to do the slightly longer method first, and then I'll show you a shortcut that actually avoids this skill entirely. So it says that there were 60 runners in a 100 meter race. The following histogram represents their times. Determine the number of runners with times above 14 seconds. Well, clearly here, this isn't the GCSE version because the area of this first bar is three times five, which is 15. So the area of this is three times five, which is 15. And the area of this bar is six along the bottom multiplied by 1.5 along the side, which is nine. So clearly 15 and 9 doesn't give us the total of the 60 runners. So let's just actually figure out what our total area is. The total area of these bars is the first one, which is 15, plus the second one, which is 9, which is 24. And we know that the frequency that these bars are corresponding to is 60. So let's find out what the scaling constant is. So the area equals the frequency multiplied by k. So k is going to be 24 divided by 60, which is 0 0.4. So let's actually see what the question wants us to do. It says determine the number of runners with times above 14 seconds. So we're going to presume that this orange bar here has got an equal distribution. So if we're going to say above 14 seconds, that's 12, 13, 14 is here. We're just interested in this little bar that we've got. So the area for above 14 is just going to be 14 to 18. This bottom bit here is 4 and the side bit is 1.5. So 4 multiplied by 1.5 is just going to be 6. So the area is 6. So if I want to find out the frequency, I know that the area equals the frequency multiplied by k, which is 0.4. So the frequency is just going to be 6 divided by 0 0.4, which is 15. So we're going to say how many runners had a time above 14 seconds? We would say 15 runners. Now, there is a different way that we could do this entirely. We could actually just work out the proportion of this bit that has been shaded in black. In fact, I'm going to highlight it in yellow here so you can see what we're talking about. This is the proportion of runners who run higher than 14. It didn't seem to like coming in yellow there, so maybe I'll do it in pink. OK, so we're talking about that section. Here's an alternative method about how we might do this. So that area of that bar was nine. And so we're actually working out here the proportion of runners above 14 seconds. And there was nine of them out of, not there wasn't nine of them, sorry, the area of that bar was nine. That's not true. <laughs> the area wasn't nine, was it? The area was down here was six. But we do know the total area. The total area of all of these bars was 24. So we know that 6 over 24, or a quarter of the runners, took longer than 14 seconds. Now we know that there are 60 runners. So all I need to do is find a quarter of 60 which is clearly 15 runners. So this one didn't even use this fact that the area and the frequency um, have a proportional scaling factor. What we did is we found out the area of the bar that we were looking for, and we compared it to the total area, and then we compared that to the amount of people that it was representing. So there's two ways of doing that. So let's have a look at this one, because there's going to be a similar way we might do this here. 
A policeman records the speed of the traffic on a busy road with a 30 mile per hour speed limit. He records the speeds of a sample of 450 cars. The histogram in figure two, which is the one below, represents the results. Calculate the number of cards, cars that were exceeding the speed limit by at least five miles per hour in the sample. So the speed limit was 30 miles per hour and it was then going faster than five miles above that. So they're really talking about 35 miles per hour here. In other words, we are interested in this bit and this bit here. So I'm going to do the slightly longer method to begin with, and then we'll do the short method and we'll see which one we prefer. So you'll notice there's no numbers for the frequency density. And if there are no numbers, you can make the density scale whatever you like, OK? Because it doesn't matter. There's always going to be that scaling constant. So I'm just going to make it nice and easy for us. I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven like this. And then we should be able to figure out what some of these areas are. Now, I'm going to just um, jot them onto the diagram. So this first one is clearly got a bit along the bottom of five and it's going up 1.5. So we've got five times 1.5. This area here is 7.5. Then we've got 10 multiplied by six, which is 60. We've then got here a five multiplied by the height of this bar, which is 4.5. So we'll do five times 4.5, which is 22.5. Then we've got a 5 multiplied by 1.5, and 5 times 1.5 is another 7.5. It's exactly the same as the one we've got earlier. And then we've got a 5 times 3, which is 15. So I'm going to do that method one. We're going to say that the area is going to be proportional to the frequency. So let's find out what the total area is. The total area is all of these bars added together. So that's 7.5 plus 60 plus 22.5 plus 7.5 plus 15. So we've got 112.5. And we know that the frequency that this represents, the total frequency, is 450. So using our formula, that the area equals the frequency multiplied by a scaling constant, 112.5 equals 450k. And so k is 112.5 divided by 450 which is 0.25. So we've got that the scaling constant is 0.25. We now just want to find out um, what these two bars here are, what area that is going to be. Well, we've, we've got their area. So the speed, the speeding area is 7.5 plus 15.5, sorry, plus 15, which is 22.5. So we know that the area equals the frequency multiplied by the scaling constant. So solving that equation, I'll do 22.5 divided by 0 0.25, and we get 90. So there are 90 cars exceeding 35 miles per hour. Now, of course, we can do the shortcut limit, uh, not the shortcut limit, just the shortcut for this. So we could just work out what the proportion of cars are that are exceeding by using the area. So the total area that we've said is 112.5. And the area that is exceeding the speed limit is 22.5. So we could just work that out as a fraction to find out what proportion are going above the speed limit. 22.5 over 112.5 is 0 0.2 or a fifth. So a fifth are above 35 miles per hour. So all we need to do is find a fifth of 450, which is clearly 90 cars. If you can spot this method, I actually think it's a lot easier. One thing I should probably say is this bit down here, um, there's just no cars between 15 and 20 that were recorded. It's not a, an error in the question. It doesn't say that it's incomplete. OK, so they might also ask you to do things 
that you use some of your earlier skills. It now says to estimate the value of the mean and median speed of the cars in the sample. And my tip here is that whenever you're asked to calculate the mean, median or quartiles from a histogram, just ignore the histogram as quick as possible by drawing a grouped frequency table and then just um, do the, the normal calculations that you would have. So I'm going to start off by just drawing the frequency table. So I'm going to have it between 10 and 15. I might be a bit lazy with how I write this, but let's do S for speed. So I'm going to do 10 to 15. There's nothing between 15 and 20, so I'll leave it. And then I'll do between 20 and 30, 30 and 35, 35 and 40, and 40 and 45. Now, this is where we probably did need to work out what K was. So this is our speed that we've got here. I'm going to do a bar that's got the area and then I'm going to do another bar that's got the frequencies. So I'm going to take the areas from earlier on. So it goes 7.5 for the first bar, 60, 22.5, 7.5 and 15. And to work out the frequencies, we could do what we did earlier on. So we know that the area equals the frequency multiplied by k, and k in this case was 0 0.25. So to find the frequency, we're going to do the area divided by 0 0.25. And remember, dividing by 0 0.25 is just the same thing as multiplying by 4. So to find their frequencies, I'm just going to take the areas and multiply them by 4. So I've got 30, 240, 22.5 times 4, that's 90, that's a 30, and that's a 60. And I'd probably check to see that that all adds up to 450. So I've got a 30, a 240, a 90, a 30, and a 60. Yep, yeah. so I have got that all right. It does add up to 450. Now, I'm not going to do this next bit of actually calculating the mean and the median, because you know what you would do here. To calculate the mean, you would need to put into your calculator the midpoints for these bits here, and you would put these frequencies. You wouldn't use this area bar anymore. And obviously, if you were going to calculate the median or the quartiles, you would also need to work out the cumulative frequency. So you'd have your 30, your 270, your um, 270, 360, 394. 50 and you'd use that to be able to find out the median etc etc okay so it's a couple of different ways of doing this this question did need you to be able to use the area equals the frequency times k um, but sometimes you can do these kind of shortcut methods that i've done here and that i've done here in red so that's that first skill we're going to look at and the next one is on gaps